it's time to kind of buy it up, folks. Oh, well, you got uh, me a little bit. Uh, oh, the buttons. This one. This one. Oh, so we're going to talk about good old Uncle Joe Biden. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's okay. so weird. So we have one of the most... It's, I, I, I'm not trying to think how to even explain it. There's so much to get into, but I think the best way to there's do no it... There's no malarkey in here, guys. There's no malarkey except everywhere there is malarkey. <laughs> so let's just get into it, guys. Hunter Biden's name is ringing throughout the political universe, from the halls of Congress to the annals of social media and the cornfields of Iowa. Ooh, very picturesque. Messing with former Vice President Joe Biden's no malarkey mojo in the Democratic presidential race. By the way, the 1950s called. They want their terms back. The 49-year-old has emerged as the as a central character in the impeachment inquiry on Capitol Hill, and is uh, complicate and it's complicating life for Mr. Biden on the campaign trail. Questions about Hunter's tabloid-worthy personal life, as well as his cushy position, which is apparently nothing wrong according to joe biden uh and on a ukraine energy company are mudding his father's message which was already mud so what do you what's muddy mud i don't know uh it is frustrating because it is the kind of thing that people know is going to get under his skin this is referring to joe biden uh, it is going to irritate him, so they're going to do it more and more. It is part of a no-holds-barred scrutiny that comes with running for the highest office in the land by refusing to acknowledge, refusing to engage on what his son knew, what he actually did by ignoring and not addressing it. Biden is putting himself in the same position as John Kerry in 2004. Uh, but, you know, old habits uh, from long-established politicians like John Kerry and Joe Biden are hard to shake, as they would have it. Mr. Kerry, who endorsed Biden last week, joined him in New Hampshire over the weekend on his no malarkey tour bus through Iowa. If you saw that, you saw that face palm, that really nice picture on that. He was not happy he's there. Um, we, we had some ideas that it might be because they didn't want him to run. They're like, just just to think, come here, come, come, to, come to join us. Anyway, where Biden said he didn't know what Hunter Biden did to earn $50,000 a month huh hmm on the board of uh, the oil company when he was vice president it's amazing they just never talked about over dinner i don't know we'll see uh he was asked uh, if he wants to get to the bottom of it, he told Axios, no, because I trust my son. In fact, there's nothing uh, on his face that he did wrong. He said, look, if you really want to talk about problems and I'm ready, we're going to do a pivot. Let's talk about the Trump family. I mean, come on. I mean, it seems like he knows more about what the Trump's kids are doing than his own son, which is kind of a issue in and of itself. Anyway, and there's not, he says, there's not one bit of evidence, not one little teeny bit to say anything wrong was done, except his son also has said that he was wrong and should have done it differently, but I'm not going to get in Biden's way of stepping on his own shoes. Uh, but you keep asking me these questions. The campaign also featured a headline-grabbing showdown with a 83-year-old man, we covered that a little bit ago, who accused Biden of selling access to the president and landing Hunter, who had no experience in the energy business. Biden, of course, in the very... Uh, tactful, diplomatic way that we know him, uh, called him, you're a damn liar. That's not true. Biden snapped a little week earlier. Biden had another tense exchange this time with a reporter who asked him to comment on a woman's claims that a paternity test proves Hunter is the father of her baby. He said, no, that's a private matter. I have no comment. I'm sure if that happened with like Ivanka, it would have been a thing he thought would have been relevant to drop up, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and he says to this woman, only you would ask, ask that you're a good man, a good man, classy. It was the latest in a series of ugly headlines about Hunter Biden, who has a crack cocaine habit and romantic relationship with his brother's widow. Hmm. Several officials acknowledged that Hunter Biden's business dealings in Ukraine were suspect and posed a potential conflict of interest with his, for his father. Senate Republicans are talking about calling Hunter Biden and his father to testify if impeachment reaches the upper chamber, which we know it probably will. So again, Democrats, you can quote me later on this. Democrats have just set themselves up for Republicans to take in all the witnesses that they want and really just destroy Joe Biden faster than it would have happened organically. But nonetheless, it's it's what's going to probably happen. Here's my uh, here's my guess is that when eventually Biden leaves the race, everyone is going to say when it happens that it wasn't because Biden was a bad candidate. He was in the wrong era. He took big corporate money. He told a huge blocks of voters to just go literally fuck themselves. 
It's they're gonna say he would have won if it wasn't for his son. So, um, Biden somehow the front runner. He's a clean and clear candidate. He has no shady dealings. I mean, everything's fine about Biden. Don't worry about Biden. Corporate media has been screaming from the rooftop since his primary started that Biden has us in the bag. But no, the real truth is this. Every time Biden speaks, every time Biden talks about any kind of issue at all, he is clearly out of touch. Biden is saying, fuck you to voters. There are three different separate occasions, but more occasions right now even coming up of Biden being disrespectful to potential voters and constituents. I mean, he is literally somebody that if he gets the nomination, if the DNC commits election fraud and decide to go all in for Biden, he will lose to somebody like Trump. And don't count on the impeachment of getting rid of Trump because that's not going to help either. And Biden's been the one that's been rooting for it. He's going to fail miserably. And the only person that's been destroying Biden is not only himself— but also his past, and there I say it, even his own son now too, because Biden isn't the answer. He's just the continuing problem of neoliberalism. Paul? I, I think we'll, we'll see Biden eventually drop out of this race after um, Iowa and New Hampshire and polling results start coming in, like actual primaries, actual caucus results start coming in. And uh, we no longer get to have news reporters going, hey, where's this just in from the 1950s? Everybody loves Biden. Like, um, <laughs> that's, that's not going to work once people actually vote. So I, I just, it's one of those, it's one of those, these things that I just cringe every time I see them saying, but he's so presidential. And don't you remember he was Obama's vice president? And oh, he's so great. He's so likable. It's, so, it's weird that everyone hates him. And everyone says that, you know, he should have some kind of policy position on something. How dare you want policy positions on things? Yeah. So go figure. I mean, that's just the problem with Biden and his entire campaign and who he is as a person. And somehow the DNC feels that he's the guy to carry the standard.